Aloha. Did you know that in addition to being a beautiful place to live, Hawaii is home to thousands of unique native plants and wildlife species? Hawaii is the most isolated group of islands in the world. It has a wide variety of habitats that support over 20,000 plants and animals, over half of which are found nowhere else on Earth. Many of these native species are also important in native Hawaiian culture and appear in stories, chants, and place names, in addition to being used for making tools, building houses and canoes, and for foods and medicines. Unfortunately, many of these amazing plants and animals and the beautiful places where they live are being threatened by non-native species like rodents and mongooses. Rodents and mongooses are destroying our beautiful and unique native Hawaiian plants and wildlife and threatening native Hawaiian cultural practices. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Hawaii Department of Land and Natural Resources Division of Forestry and Wildlife are currently considering options for controlling and eradicating rodents and mongooses and we need your input. Let's talk to a few of our experts and find out more about this process and how you can help us protect our native species and culture for generations to come. Let's begin with Sean Kozo, an invasive species biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and DOFA, uh, DLNR Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Forestry and Wildlife, are working together to create a programmatic environmental impact statement um, to control and or eradicate rodents and mongoose in conservation areas. Uh, basically, we have methods and tools available um, uh, for controlling rodents and mongoose in urban and agriculture areas, but to, we would then need to adapt some of these to the methods for conservation areas. This process will help us identify and evaluate the tools and methods uh, in these conservation areas as, um, and analyze also their impacts to the human and natural environment. So once that toolbox is created, what will that mean if a manager wants to do a control or eradication project on a site? So once we have the toolbox created, a site manager will still have to evaluate which of the tools are the right ones to use in their, con in their specific conservation area. They will still need to comply with laws and regulations for that area, get the right permits and authorization, and even consider, and also consider the impacts to the tools they plan to use. Right now, we are asking for public comment on some of the best available ways to control and eradicate rodents and mongooses. Here's Pat Chi, small mammal control planner in the Division of Forestry and Wildlife. We're thinking about a rodent and mongoose control. We want to talk about uh, how we can do it in a way that, uh, that we can choose methods that are best for the specific situation. And that means that we can take into account things like uh, what will be most effective and productive uh, for other resources, including the public, and uh, using integrated pest management in order to mitigate certain issues that might arise. Can you talk a little bit about the kinds of tools and methods we are evaluating for this programmatic environmental impact statement? Sure. Um, currently, we use a lot of products that various uh, other industries might, might use in, in the urban areas, such as uh, rat traps and live traps and uh, rodenticides, such as uh, difastinone. And so these are the kinds of methods that we're considering. And uh, we can also, uh, we're also considering things that are not common to, to what we would use in the urban areas, such as doing it with uh, hand broadcast or uh, from, from the air uh, using rodenticides that way, and or using multi-kill traps, which are relatively new, but are almost as effective as rodenticides in getting rid of rodents on a larger scale. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Division of Forestry and Wildlife have not made any decisions about the specific alternatives we will consider. Pat, can you tell us a little bit about what sorts of information we would like people to share with us to develop those alternatives? Well, we're definitely uh, considering certain methods and uh, various ways to mitigate the issues that might be coming from them. But of course, we're, we're only uh, looking at it from our own perspective. And we clearly want the public to give us uh, more ideas as far as uh, what methods might be best to use for given areas, as well as uh, whether or not we, we come up with uh, certain issues from those methods and how we can mitigate for those things in the future. Here's Christy Martin of the Coordinating Group on Alien Pest Species. 
Christy, so how can people share their input with us and what happens next? We're asking that anyone who wants to comment on the process or the need for rodent and mongoose control in conservation areas to protect native species, we're asking for those comments by April 7th. Anyone wishing to comment has to do it in writing by April 7th, and you can do it online through regulations.gov, that's regulations.gov, or through the U.S. mail, or by visiting www.removeratsrestorehawaii.org, and by clicking Get Involved on that website. So this is just the first of several opportunities for people to comment? Once the comment period closes, we'll be able to gather up all of those comments and then the work will begin in putting together a draft that really addresses those comments and we will come back out with the draft programmatic EIS for everyone to review and we're going to go come back around for public comments once again. Protecting native Hawaiian plants, animals and the environment is our shared kuleana. Our native species are not only unique to our islands but also an important part of Hawaiian culture. Controlling non-native species like rodents and mongooses helps protect our native species and culture for generations to come.